In this tutorial, we'll look at how to create prototypes with Figma. Figma is a powerful design and prototyping tool that you can use for both your UX and UI projects. If you're new to Figma, I recommend you check out the tutorial I created on designing wireframes in Figma first, which I'll link to in the description below. In this tutorial, we'll actually be taking some of those wireframes and turning them into an interactive prototype. So we'll get started by opening up a Figma file with the wireframes I designed for Sam Shoes, a made up online shoe store. As you can see, we have a few static pages, including the home page, the women's category page, and the product page. And what I'll walk you through in this tutorial is how to connect these pages so users can click through just like they would on the real product. So the first thing we want to do is enter prototype mode in Figma. And you can do that by clicking on the prototype tab in the top right hand corner. Now you'll notice that nothing really changes except for the content in the right sidebar. So we'll start there. These are the settings for your prototype. And there are a few things you may want to change depending on your designs. So the first setting that you may want to change here is device. And device refers to the device that your prototype is presented in. So in this case, we're designing for desktop, so we probably wouldn't want to present these designs inside an additional device. But if we were designing for mobile, for instance, it would be nice to show these designs inside an iPhone. And here's where you could do that. So in device, you could choose iPhone 11 Pro, for instance. And then when you select the frame and select present in the top right, your designs will appear inside an iPhone. You can actually scroll down and it looks like the final product, which is great for presenting your designs. But like I said, in our case, we'll be designing for desktop. So I'll actually get rid of this frame, zoom out. And then here in the prototype settings, I'll change that back to none. Another setting that we can change is the background color. And this refers to the background color of your prototype that appears when you're in present mode. So if I open up present mode here in the top right hand corner, I can see my designs here and there are these margins, these dark margins on the sides um, that are currently black. And that's because here in the background color setting, we have black, but in our case, we want to change them to white. So it looks like the designs cover the full canvas. So now when I go back to present mode, you'll see that the sides of the designs are now white, which feels a lot more natural. It feels like there's not this awkward cut here on the sides of the design. So now that we set up our prototype and adjusted the settings, we can actually start connecting these different screens. And the way that you do that is by creating connections. So to create a connection, we'll actually go here to the home page, for instance. Um, and let's imagine that we want to connect this women link to the women's category page, which is this one here. To do that, I would click on women and you'll see that to the right of women, this little white circle appears. And that's what's known as a node and nodes allow you to connect these links to other pages. So if I click on the node, the white circle and I drag, I can now drag to any other page in this file. So I can drag to this category page or I can drag to another page, which is further on in the file. So if I drag to the category page, you'll see that there's a connection created. There's a, there's a line that's revealed here that shows that when you click women, it's going to take you to the women category page. Another thing that popped up when I created that connection was this little arrow here in the top left. And this is known as the starting frame indicator. And all this indicates is which frame of your prototype or which one of these screens will be the first screen that people see when they open your prototype. So right now it's set to home, but if I wanted to change it, I would just click on the arrow, drag, and then change it to another screen. So in this case, when people open your prototype, they'll start on the women's category page. In our case, we actually want users to start on the home page. So I'll click that arrow again and drag it back to the home page. So now let's create another connection. So currently we have a connection from the home page on the women's category link to the women's category page. But now let's create a way for users to get back from the women's category page to the home page. So what we'd want to do is select the Sam shoes logo. And then as you can see, the node appears here to the right. We'll want to click on that node and drag it over to the home page. So that way, when users click on the Sam shoes logo, it'll take them back to the home page. 
So now before we create more connections here in our prototype, let's make sure that the connections we already created are working correctly. So to do that and to preview your prototype, what you wanna do is go to the top right hand corner and select the play button. And this opens up present mode. So we already looked at this screen previously, and this is your actual prototype. This is what you'd wanna share with users, clients, teammates, etc. Um, so in present mode, there are a few things to note. Um, you'll see that present mode is just another tab in your Figma file. So if you wanna go back to your designs, you just click on this tab to the left, or you can go to the other tab to the right and enter present mode again. Um, and what's really nice about present mode is that it updates automatically. So as you update your prototype here in the left, this tab here just updates automatically. You don't have to keep opening up a new prototype every time you wanna preview something. Um, so in our case, we wanna preview all of the connections we just created. Um, so to do that, we just click anywhere here on the prototype and you'll see that this little blue rectangle appears um, overlaying women. And that's what's known as a hotspot. And that indicates that there's an interactive element that we can click on. Um, so if we go ahead and click women, that takes us to the women's category page. Um, and we can scroll down this page, check out the content um, like a normal website. Um, and then we also wanna click again to see if there are any hotspots on this page. So if we click, we'll see that there's a hotspot on the logo, which we know we created. Um, and that will take us back to the home page. Um, so it looks like both our connections are working correctly. Let's create a few more. The next connection we'll wanna make is from the women's category page to the product page. And where we wanna add the connection is here at the bottom in top kicks for women um, on this specific product right here. Um, so I could just go ahead and select this image, drag the node and bring it over to the product page. Uh, but what I actually wanna do is make this whole card clickable. Um, so this image here or this block and then this title as well. Um, so to do that, what you wanna do is select both elements here and then hit Command G or Control G on Windows. And what that does is it groups both elements together and creates one single node for this entire group. So now this whole card is clickable versus just the rectangle. And now I can take that node and drag it over to the product page and we'll see that there's a connection now. And now when I go back into preview mode, I'll go over to the women page, scroll down. And then if I click anywhere here on the prototype, I'll see that the hotspot is for this entire card. So I can go ahead and click that and that takes us to the product page. So the next thing I wanna do is give users a way back to the women's category page. So I actually wanna include a link right here or a connection that links back to the women's category page. So to do that, I'll go back to our design file and then I'll select women here, double click on that. I think there's a group going on here. Um, and one thing that you'll notice is that when I select women, the selection box or this bounding box is actually pretty large. And I'll show you what that means uh, when we go over to our prototype. So if I click on the node, connect it to the women's category page, I'll zoom out so you can see that. When we go back to the prototype, that selection box is actually the same as our hotspot now. So our hotspot is actually pretty large as well which would be fine in most cases. That's, that's probably fine in this case because it's just a couple of pages and we're just linking back and forth. Uh, but if you had a more complex prototype uh, where you wanna include a link on women and then another link on sneakers, that really wouldn't work. Um, so to fix this and to make this hotspot slightly smaller, what you'd wanna do is go back to your design file. We double click on women here and then we just drag, click to drag this selection box and make sure it only covers the women link. And now when we go back to our prototype, we click anywhere, you can see that the hotspot is exactly the size of the women link. So the last connection that I wanna make here is a connection from the product page, which is the page we're on, back to the home page. So to do that, I'll create a connection here on the logo, on the Sam Shoes logo, that links back to the home page. So we'll go over to the design file. And now I could just select the Sam Shoes logo, 
drag the node, drag it over to the home page. But I'm actually going to show you a trick to speed up this process of creating connections, um, especially when it comes to navigational elements. Um, so what I can do is go to another page where I've already made that connection, like the women's category page. And I can select this element and then simply paste it into the other page where I want that connection to exist. And now you'll notice that when I paste it, it actually pastes the connection as well. And it keeps this one too. So you have a connection on the women's category page, which we made before, and we have this new one on the product page. And this is amazing, especially when you're working with things like menus, because when you have a menu with 10 different links, you don't want to have to do that for each page and create those connections uh, on each one of your links. Instead, you can just copy the entire menu, paste it on the new page, and those connections will already be made. Next, we'll look at how to edit your prototype. In other words, edit some of the connections that you already made. And doing this in Figma is super straightforward. All you have to do is click on one of the connections. Um, so in this case, the connection from women to the women's category page, I'll click on that. And now you have a few options here. So, so one edit that you could make is link this to a different frame. Um, so to do that, I'm clicking on the line here and then I can drag it to a different frame. Um, so now women would take you to the product page. We don't really want that, so I'll hit undo. Um, another edit that you can make is get rid of this connection altogether. So to do that, just click on the blue line and then you can hit delete on the keyboard and that gets rid of the connection. Um, and then lastly, you could edit a few options um, or what's called interaction details on this specific connection. Um, and these appear in this little pop-up here to the right called interaction details. Uh, and there are a few things that you can do here. Um, so one, you can manually change um, what screen you're navigating to. Um, so for instance, I could choose product page instead of women, uh, but I don't really want to do that. And then you have a few options for, for animations, um, which I'll touch on briefly. I, I don't want to get too in the weeds here. I could do a whole tutorial um, on animation, uh, but I do want to touch on a few cool features uh, that Figma has to offer. Um, so First off, the animation refers to the animation between screens. So when I click this link, um, and that takes me to this women's category page, um, this is the animation or the transition that happens between these two screens. So right now it's set to instant. Um, so as you can see, when I click women, it instantly goes to the women's category page. But I could actually change that to something like dissolve and what that does is instead of just flashing to the women's category page, there's actually a nice dissolve transition between screens. And this is just one basic animation style, uh, but Figma has a few more advanced features that, that are really amazing actually. So if you choose Smart Animate for instance, uh, what happens is the elements uh, from this page transform into the elements of the next page. So if I hit women here, you can see that some elements start to shift. And that wasn't very smooth because there weren't a lot of common elements from page to page. Uh, but if I do something like take the women page, duplicate that, and then we'll actually make this duplicate the men's page. Let me just make this slightly smaller. And then if I link men to this new page, and now I preview that and it, see it's set to smart animate already. Um, if I preview that, here's what it looks like. So as you can see, that line automatically animates um, to the men's link in this case, and it also gets smaller. Um, and that's what smart animate does. Um, that's a really basic example and it gets a lot more complex um, when you're working with different elements, uh, but it's a really quick way to, to create transitions between screens. And it works especially well uh, on things like apps where you're pulling up sheets or pop-ups. But like I mentioned before, we really won't be getting into the weeds of animation in this tutorial. And we're really just scratching the surface here. Figma offers some amazing features when it comes to animation. Um, and it's, it's actually really powerful. So I definitely encourage you to play around with some of these features uh, in the interaction details panel. So the last thing I want to talk about here is how to share your prototype. So you might want to share your prototype with a client um, or a teammate that's involved on the project. Uh, and to do that in Figma, it's actually super straightforward. 
Um, so the first thing you want to do is open up present mode. Um, so you could, you know, open up this tab if it's already open. Um, if not, just click on the play icon in the top right hand corner. Um, and then you hit share prototype. Now one important note here, make sure you're not hitting share from the actual design file um, because in this case you'd be, you'd be sharing the design file, not the prototype. Um, so when you're sharing just a prototype, make sure you're doing it from present mode. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit share prototype and that gives us a few options. So the first option is to invite um, a user to this prototype. Um, you can do that by entering their email here and then they'll get an invitation um, to the prototype and they'll open that up. Um, that's one way to do it. Uh, but the way that I actually prefer to share out prototypes is by hitting this copy link option. Uh, and that just copies a link to your clipboard to this prototype um, that you can share out in a Slack message uh, by email or a Facebook message or really whatever you wanna do. Um, just be mindful that if you're doing this copy link um, method, I guess, you wanna make sure that this is set to anyone with a link uh, because if it's set to only people invited to this file, um, when someone receives that link and they're not invited to this file, they may not be able to open it. Um, so if you're sharing out your link, make sure you set it to anyone with a link. And like I said before, when you copy this link and someone opens it up, um, it actually opens up right in the browser, uh, which is really nice because you don't need to install Figma on your computer or even make a Figma account. Uh, you can actually just view the prototype right in the browser um, and it looks just like it does in present mode in Figma. Um, so you can scroll down, you can click through, and everything works in the same way. And you have those animations in there as well if you're using animations. Um, so it's actually super straightforward and a great way to quickly share your prototypes with other people involved on the project. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about UX and becoming a UX designer, check out the Butter Academy online UX design course. We cover the fundamentals of UX design with tutorials just like this one and assignments so that you can practice what you're learning. There's a link in the description below if you want to learn more. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to like and subscribe for more tutorials.